The second to last piece of this particular lesson is going to be a focus on drawing. And what you're going to be doing in this particular part of the lesson and in your notes is you are going to have to draw two three-dimensional objects on paper. Okay, so using the concepts of a prism or using the concepts of a pyramid, we are going to make at least two three-dimensional shapes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with a cube. Okay, now the thing about a cube is uh, you got to think of a cube as a prism. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find a space here and I'm just going to draw a line. I'm using graph paper. I'm going to draw a line that's three squares long. If you're not using graph paper, uh, it's going to be more of a challenge. You might want to make yourself a grid using a pencil and a ruler. Once I have my, once I have my three square long line drawn, I'm going to go and put a dot here, and I'm going to draw a line from there to here. So I'm going to draw this next line to here. And then I'm going to draw another line that's very similar. Notice that this line went one up and two over. So think of that as kind of like a slope, right? So my next line has to have the same slope. So it's going to go one up and two over. So I'm going to put a point right here. And I'm going to put a point here. And I'm going to connect those two points like so. So I've got my four points. And now I'm just going to finish it out. So this is going to be the top of my cube. Now, I could copy and paste, but that wouldn't do very well in terms of helping you to draw this. And so the thing about drawing a cube is that cubes all have the same length of edge. So if my edge here is three squares wide, then my next side down has to be three three squares tall and the same here and the same across there so this would be my front face now again the idea of slope comes into play if we look, look at this point if I go up one over two, I can do the same thing down here at this point, up one over two. And so I can put a point there and connect. And this actually then just becomes more a matter of connecting the dots. And with graph paper, it makes it much easier. We would call this the left, excuse me, if I didn't know my lefts and my rights here, this would be my right face like so and so we would name this a square prism or it's also known as a cube and you can get really creative with this if you really like this right you could i could shade all of this in across the top you know, I'm a big fan of red, green, and blue from my science lessons. So we could, could shade this in green. I could shade this in red and really give it some depth and dimension here by color coding it. Uh, when you are drawing uh, objects like this, color coding really does help a lot. And so you can see here, I'm giving it uh, some dimension by coloring it. That works really, really well. I like using highlighter because then I can still see the lines easily. Okay, and then we're going to do a blue side here. On this right face. And so now it really stands out as being a three-dimensional object. If you were to look at this, just glance at it without having seen me draw it, you would instantly see that as a cube. It's got dimension to it. All right. The next thing that we're going to draw that I want you to draw is I want you to draw, we're going to do a triangular prism. We're going to do this one on its side. 
So here we go. The first thing I need to do with this triangular prism is I need to create a triangle. So I'm going to start with a line down here that is too wide. And I am going to go ahead and make what looks to be an equilateral triangle. I am then going to draw another equilateral triangle somewhere over in this space. Okay, so I could draw an equilateral triangle. Basically that same triangle, I could draw it here. I could draw that equilateral triangle here. I could draw that equilateral triangle up here. And you don't have to do all of these, but the idea here is that you could draw that equilateral triangle in multiple spots. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. I think the one that's going to look the nicest is probably going to be that middle one. So that's the one I'm going to go with. All right, I'm going to start next by connecting these lines. I would suggest using a ruler for this. So I go right dot to right dot of my triangle. So I'm going to connect those lines. I'm then going to go top of triangle to top of triangle. And I'm going to go left bottom to left bottom. Now notice that some of the lines overlap pretty heavily here. That's okay. That really is okay. So if I zoom in on this triangular prism, I could highlight the ends here. So I could uh, go ahead and make this end red. I can make this end red. But then I could make this front face blue. And that front face goes all the way back here to that edge there. I like to outline my, my faces as I, I color them in because then it makes filling them in really easy like so. And this takes a lot of practice. So you may be doing this for the first time and like it may be turning out all wonky. Your lines might not be straight, et cetera, et cetera. But you should practice this. Okay. And so there's my triangular prism. And you can do this with just about any shape. So if I wanted to, and I could, let me just show you one that's really random. But if I wanted to do a prism like this, yes, I do have the copy and paste feature that would be needed for this. But basically, most any object can be a prism. So I could do this. And then I just connect the, the points that are the similar. So what I mean by that is if I well, if I have a red point at that tip and a red point at that tip, I've got a blue tip there and a blue tip there. And I could do, um, you know, a black point there and a black point there. And I connect these dots. And I basically can make a prism. That's a really... I can make a prism out of just about any shape. And so I could definitely connect these pieces and I could, I could work at connecting them like so and then shade in the different colors if I wanted to. Now, the, the interesting thing about this is if I were to put more of these on here, it could really start to, to mess with your head, but it basically should work such that I have, they should all be able to line up on their lines, and I could create an object like that. And that's where it could start to hurt your head a little bit. Okay, 
now that we're done with drawing, um, and you need to have drawn a couple of different three-dimensional shapes uh, for your notes, because you're going to need to turn those into me, I want you to go ahead and take a look at this last example. Okay, in this last example, we're going to also take a look at looking at three-dimensional shapes and figuring out information that we've already covered. So think of this as more like a review. Excuse me, like a review. All right, so the first question here is going to focus on what shape would face B to C to F to E? What face would that be? Then uh, you need to name two line segments that are parallel to segment CF, so this segment right here. Then you need to name one line segment that is skew, so it's not parallel and it does not intersect segment BE. So that'd be this, the front of this pr pure prism right here. And then are there any parallel surfaces or planes in this three-dimensional figure? So in looking at this entire three-dimensional prism, are there any surfaces or planes? So not edges, because yeah, we have parallel edges. We have an, an edge here that's parallel to, you know, say here, etc. cetera. Um, but we're talking about surfaces and planes. So is this face parallel to anything? Is this bottom triangle parallel to anything? Those kinds of things. So the primary focus of this week was nets and three-dimensional shapes, naming three-dimensional shapes and putting into practice some of the things that we've talked about. But there are also going to be a couple of review items, and so I want to briefly cover those here at the end of our lesson. The first review item is that you're going to be needing to know some different parts of circles. And so when we're talking about three-dimensional objects, there are just terms that we're going to keep coming back to. And so uh, a couple of terms that I want you to be familiar with is that the line that goes directly across the middle of a circle is known as the diameter. A line that goes from the center to the edge of a circle is a radius. But then there's this other line. Any line that connects one side of the circle to the other side of a circle is known as a chord. Okay, so you've got diameter, radius, chord. These are different parts of circles. You've got a a center point in the middle. Okay, so there's different parts of circles. And then I also want you to be able to, to graph triangles and quadrilaterals. And so that's not as hard as you might think it is. You know, if I were to draw my graph here, I have x and y, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I may say I want you to graph. I may say I want you to graph uh, this triangle. Okay, the triangle ABC, where A is 1, 1, B is 3, 1, and C is one six. And so you would graph these, right? This is X, this is Y. So for the point one one, you'd put a point at, you go over one, up one, right here. And that'd be point A. B is gonna be three one. That three is the X. So I go over the X to three, and then I go up, up the y-axis one space. So point B is here, and C is 1, 6. Okay, so I go over 1, and I go up to 6. And that'd be point C. And I connect the dots like so, and there we are. And that is how you graph a triangle. So it's not too bad. So these are a couple of review concepts. And coordinate points are review. Graphing is review. The parts of a triangle are review. And so you're going to be spending some time reviewing some of these skills as well.
All right, that's the end of this week's uh, lesson over three-dimensional shapes and a little bit of review on some of those two-dimensional concepts. And when we get back into this again, we're going to be looking at how to calculate surface area and volume of three-dimensional shapes. So we really want you to be able to have a solid understanding of triangles, squares, rectangles, circles, um, how three-dimensional shapes work and how you look at them and how you draw them before we get into calculating values about them.